Hello and welcome and thank you for joining me. This is the continuation of my last video where I covered the basics of SQL and how you can form the SQL syntax and how to do basic queries. Today's video we're going to talk about relationship queries and how you can use SQL to query fields from parent object, fields from child object and a combination of both. So let's get into it. Relationship queries are really powerful because they let you run queries and get the data from parents up to five level deep in your child. So let's say you're starting with opportunity and you wanted to see the values of account in that same query. You can do that without having to create a formula field. Um, you can do that in reports as well, but it's just way faster to run a SQL than creating a report in most cases, especially if you're just looking for a quick number. The way you're going to do that is select. So this is still the same, right? Just like before and from those part do not change. Now what's new here is we are saying account dot name. So it is important to figure out what your relationship ID is. So if you go to your object manager, you can find out what your name is for the linkage. You don't have to put contact dot contact dot because you're querying on contact already. That's just another preference. And then we parent to child is a bit tricky because we are familiar now with select name and from account. So this portion is the same. There is an extra. We have comma here. And instead of adding a bunch of other fields, we are now getting fields from contacts. So first name, last name, these are the contact fields, right? And it is important, super important to get this right, get the actual relationship right. Otherwise you're going to run into errors. So, but it is also really powerful. You can then also combine them. You can have where criteria. So in this case, the sub query, this is called sub query, by the way. So if you are adding another query in a main query, that's called sub query. So in sub query, you can also add filters where active is true. And then you're also adding filter to your parent query. So the way this result is going to appear is first it's going to get all the accounts where industry is healthcare. Then it is going to further find all the contacts where active is true within those accounts. Okay. If there were no contacts that match that criteria, it's going to be blank. For this one, on the other hand, since there is no filtering on the parent side, it will give you all the accounts and all the contacts for that accounts. So it matters where your where criteria is so that the query will filter it accordingly. All right. That might feel like a lot, but we'll take a look at a few examples. And so you're going to feel more confident about this. So let's do a simple one first. So I'm going to start with select ID from contact to make sure I have some examples to show. Great, I have tons of examples. I'm going to do first name, last name from contact. So those are my bunch of contacts here, okay? And then I'm also going to do account ID. So let's understand the difference between account ID and account. Account ID just gives you the ID of the account. Nothing more. It's not showing anything else. So I see that I have this account ID and this contact, but I don't know anything about that contact account yet. Okay. Then I'm going to add account dot. And the moment I put dot there, you can see, I can see all the different fields from account itself, right? Billing street, billing zip, name, so let's just look at the name. So that's the account name. I can also put account dot type, etc. So there we go. Now we've got the name, the account name of this contact, and also the type of the contact, which is perfect. So I can get more information. And by the way, using this extension, you can also just copy the Excel and paste it in an Excel sheet so you can do further manipulation if needed. So that's also super handy. You can filter the results here as well, like that. 
we looked at the first one so now we are getting the account the parent field in the child object so we are still querying on the contact here and then we're just pulling in the values from parent just like how you do in formula fields and flows we're already doing this so it's just a matter of putting that in a query so that's one now let's look at the other portion oh before we move into that let's look at how did i get this account dot how did i know what to use right so if i go to my contact object and go to the fields i will see account name that's the account id and for standard objects is different the field name here is account even though it says account id is the api name of the field the id field but the field name is account and while we are here let's also look at child relationship names now this is what we're going to use for subquery and it says it right there this field defines relationship between this object. This child relationship name is used in SQL queries on the parent object type to refer to this object type. For example, contact has a lookup field for account. The child relationship name would be contacts. That's what the contacts is. For custom fields, you can use the field name underscore underscore r dot, whatever the parent fields are. And for the subqueries, you're going to use underscore underscore r. Okay. Now let's reverse it and start from account again. Select ID from account. And we're just going to put name of the account. And let's do the other query. Select first name. So this is where the extension will not guide you with what the subquery should be. But, you know, you already can tell what the contact last name is the field name and what else we want to add maybe other fields like active for example from contact from account so all we're doing is we're just getting few fields from the parent and few fields from child from contact so is that correct though Let's see what we get. There we go. You're going to get an error. Didn't understand the relationship. But because, as we just discussed, the field should be contacts here. And the data will be a little bit different. Um, you would have to export this in Excel to see. But because the contact records is returning a list, it's going to look like object, object. But when you actually look at it further, you can see all the different data points. So it's, the way it captures it is context record dot zero, record dot one, and so on. So it's going to be a pretty long field um, to go through, but that's how it's going to display in this format. So it's one, two, three, whichever the longest list is. So whichever account has the maximum number of contacts, that's how it's going to show up. So the way I would use this if I had to use in my daily life for data analysis is I would just add some conditions where active is true. I'm going to say active equal to true. And also where type equal to, and as you can see, it stopped recommending me things, which is fine. And run the query so now you can see I've got only one contact John bond and active is true and that's my account so it just gives you a quick view of how many accounts have active contacts okay hopefully that makes sense uh, please let me know if there are any questions around this I'll be happy to cover this in more detail um, let's move on to our next bonus tip section and this is where I save the best for the last uh, because you need the foundation, but there are so many neat tricks that you can use within SQL as well. All right, some bonus tips. You all struggle with date and formats and filters. So SQL has an array of tools how you can use 
date. So let's say you wanted to run a query and you wanted to just see all the opportunities that were created last week. You can directly use this guy right here and you can say where well, close date equal to last week. As simple as that. If you wanted to query things that were created in last 10 weeks or last 10 weeks, 12 weeks, you can give a number here and run. And this also applies to months, years, quarter, and so on. So this is so powerful to run. In fact, we just went live with a project and this is the query I was using every single day to see how many cases were created yesterday, today, last week, last month, without having to go to report and you know make that change all the time. Polymorphic field, um, I don't want to get too deep into this, but um, task and events are special types, for especially the what and who ID fields. Because they are polymorphic, which means they are able to relate to different objects. So who ID can have lead or contact, what ID can have account opportunities and all the other objects in Salesforce. So using the relationship query, as we just discussed, won't exactly work for task and event. So be mindful of that. Let me know if this is of interest to you and I can do a dedicated video on polymorphic, but this will be an example of if you want to run a query. We already actually looked at null filter. I showed you how to query something where equal to null. And we also looked at multi-select. So this slide is good. And I'm going to show you some date values. Next, aggregate functions. This is the most highly used thing that I use, especially if I'm just looking to do some queries, right? Um, all the data that we were just seeing was great, but um, usually what business wants to know is how many opportunities are there? How many cases for this value? How many, um, how many values for, uh, you know, organized by pick list? So that this is where you want to really focus in and use count so count, if you just use count without anything inside the bracket, then you can just use select count from account where name is something. It will show you just the count. It will just give you the count. It's not going to give you anything else. The where, whatever criteria you picked, it's going to just show you how many are there that meets that criteria. Count field name, on the other hand, is more powerful as in you can also see not just the count but also categorize it based on whatever field you decide to use in this example it has lead source as a field and count of id from lead where group by we didn't talk about group by but group by basically can group data uh, based on a given value so we can query leads group by lead source and so the data will look like you know there are web and count is 200 uh, website or event count is 300 so you can basically quickly look at a summary sort of report based on the value it really works well with pick lists because those are more defined there are different other um, aggregate functions like average, you can do an average of uh, obviously like number fields. Um, you can do account distinct, min, max, sum. Um, so we don't want to get too crazy here, but um, it's also really helpful, all of these functions, if you want to use them as well. Next is, uh, again, another date. So calendar year, you can also do some formatting if you're getting the data. So let's say you are not liking how the created date has a bunch of Z, Z in the end, and you just wanted to see the created date, you can do things like this. So this is called function. So we have calendar year and you can put the field name in between and get the data in that format. So let's take a look at a few of those and we're gonna jump into Salesforce now. So starting with the date format, as I said. So let's say I wanted to do count where created date equal to, and look at that. All of these things you can use. You can say last month, probably don't have anything last month. That's okay. 
last year? Nothing. I can also say greater than equal to last year. It's probably not going to return any result. Opportunity. I have two results for greater than equal to. So I use the operator that we learned about in the beginning of this video and last year. So that's something just like how you use in report the dynamic date filters. It's the similar concept. Um, you can also do things like last n year and instead of n you just put some value two three four whatever still um two that's okay if i do four more results um so that's essentially how you can use the date um, and you can do pretty nifty things here right as you saw um, month, year, quarter, day, tomorrow, today, week, all of those things. Very exciting feature. Um, created date. Now let's look at the another thing that I just mentioned. So when you do created date query in SQL, you're going to get results like this. Now you can use a function, which I actually just learned about today. It would have saved me a lot of time. Format created date. So if you use format, it's going to format it based on your time zone preference. Very exciting. Like this is more human readable than the other format. So you can use format like that as well. And then let's talk about count. And that is where we'll end the video after count. So let's say you just wanted to look at all the opportunities within a certain time. You can do that. It's not going to export any data because I said only count. So it's going to just show me five records. Another reason to use count is before you run any query, it's good to just get a count of everything just so you know what you're dealing with and count queries are faster. So let's say if your account has, if your org has like millions of accounts, right? Instead of trying to run query directly on account, just do a count on account and see how many are there and then do some where just to assess the data and see how many accounts are there and what are the issues you mind running to because count runs faster than other things. So use count for those things. Then um, I'm gonna remove this actually. So I have five opportunities. Um, but then if I'm interested in seeing how many opportunities are in different stages along with their counts. Now that's where I would use group by and count together. So I would say, I'm interested in stage name. I can do count of ID from opportunity group by stage name. If you don't do this, you're gonna run into error. It has to be aggregated or grouped. So I'm gonna do group by stage name. Now it should show me, I've got prospecting two opportunities, qualification two and close last one. So this is just going to give you some superpowers that you can now go ahead and use day one. I hope this was helpful and you learned something out of it and um, take the homework, do practice as much as you can. And so you are going to get more and more confident in building these queries. Um, I do plan on making a second video, but let me know in the comments if there are any other topics that you want to dig more into from this video.